Welcome teachers to this recap from Thursday's session on the Notes Master platform. This is designed to refresh those that were there and also reintroduce those, this new platform to those that perhaps had some connectivity issues. The first thing to say is we are looking at the new platform. So if you find yourself on this page, Caribbean.notesmaster, copyrighted 2015, it is the older platform, and this is where we where we want to be, okay? Notesmaster.com. Now, of note in this scenario is that this video is going to show us how to do the things that I covered briefly in the introductory session. There are a series of other videos that will show you how to do more complex tasks. So you can learn a little bit more about the site through scrolling down, but let's let's sign up and let's select our country, Caribbean. Incidentally, you see these other flags. These represent Notes Master initiatives in, in other countries. So we are concerned, however, with Caribbean. Then choose your location. So you have all of the countries and their respective schools listed. So you don't have to type your school in, just find it in the list. I was, well, my parents are Jamaican. I was born in Guyana, but I'll be a Jamaican, seeing as I was reading about Jamaica the other day. And I select a school here. Put in your email address. Try and make sure it's an active email address because Notesmaster has an internal mail system that will send a note to your external mail system letting you know that there's activity concerning you on the platform, okay? So put in your email, your password, choose a user type, <coughs> excuse me, educator, and then select your teacher in service or if you're principal or if you're out of service. Put your name. I was reading about Shabaranks, so I'll, he's won an award I believe, so I'll put Shabaranks in as my username for the day. Use your real name obviously, or some students tend to use different names. Browse up your icon. So we've made this part a little smaller than your traditional Facebook part because it's not about um, a whole host of profile icons. It's about being as straight as possible. Now this is our syllabus area. So the student selects their syllabus. The syllabus they select here appears in their workspace. And their workspace, food and nutrition, will be displayed. Accept the terms of use. And then you have CAPTCHA. Now CAPTCHA is a set of letters that is designed to let the system know that you're a human registering on it. So that the Shabaranks is actually a human being, not a bot program as they call them which then infects the site with all kinds of dubious emails. It's a student-orientated platform, so it needs to be secure. If you can't read the letters, click the refresh on the right here, and you get a new set of letters. You can type them in. They need to be case-sensitive. Make sure they're accurate, and then click Submit. Okay. Once we submit, having checked our page, checked everything's okay, we're faced with a little animation that you should see here. So this introduces you to, to Notes Master. If you want to update your profile, you can do so up here. Click on Edit Profile and you can add a new subject or update your school if you made any errors. Mail is the internal mail system I spoke of. And Calendar, which you'll see in a moment here, is also about keeping you organized. So if you have an activity in your calendar, it'll be corresponded with your mail and your mail will then send an external mail to your Gmail or your Hotmail or your Outlook, okay? So you can use mail to communicate with students, communicate with teachers internally on the, on the platform. And if anybody leaves a comment on a resource you've created, you'll get a corresponding mail to say someone has left a note on your resource. So this is this little animation. Notes Master tells you you can create new resources. Next, shows you can find new resources. And these blue lines represent the syllabus, okay? This platform is based around the curriculum, and that's how it differs from Edmodo or Schoology or Frontal or Moodle. It's configured around CXE's curriculum, so you don't have to do that configuration. And it provides a standardized process across all territories for all teachers to find and share content, making it easier to stay a little organized, okay? So once you've had a look at the animation, we're going to then click on the next button and next takes us through to 
one of the first steps which we're going to do is joining a group. So it's important we try and show you all the little steps on, on Notes Master here. Joining a group is primarily designed to get you now straight started into our CXC group area. So here's groups. And we are in this part of the platform there, groups. Classes is where you create virtual, virtual classes. And then you have resources. The materials we create will end up in the resources area, importantly. And we will be creating those materials in workspace, okay? So we have our workspace area. We create the materials there privately. It's private until we share it with our group, okay? Once we've shared it with the group, we can then publish it to the resources area for all students to access. So create in workspace privately, share with the group for us to feedback and review. When we're happy, share with the resources area for teachers to then find them in the resources area and add them to their classes for the students to access. And this is our, this is our group, the CXE content program group. And it says here, join group, which indicates that I'm not currently a member of this group. Click on it, click on agree and join, and then I am now in the group. Being in the group is a little focal point for us. We can leave posts for one another to communicate, ask questions, give feedback, raise challenges, say how things are going for us within the community. And that's our little private post area. The group also has a range of videos, as you'll see here. And these videos now, they focus on how we use parts of the platform, okay? Um, you'll notice one says Notes Master using tables, and you'll notice that one is about images. So those of you that were in the presentation would have been introduced to these these set of videos that you see here. So spend some time looking and reading at them and watching them. Uh, watch them over and over, and they show you how to perform various various tasks on the platform, okay? The material we create is published here to this shared resources area, okay? And these are the syllabuses that we have and the syllabuses that will be utilized for the program. So students will come here, and this is a list of participants in the group. So if you notice, I've just used adventurous names. They'll all be removed from the workshop, so Shaba, Barack Trump, Rosemary Nelson. So these participants will all be removed. But this tracks progress, how much content we've shared. I believe we have a set of targets of 40 resources each. Um, and that, that is designed to uh, keep track. And of course, anyone who's not sharing enough, we would then offer them support. And it's just a way of identifying anyone who's having a little bit of challenges. Okay, So that's this little group environment. And that's where we'll be creating our, our, our work privately. Okay, it's a private space for us. So as you see, I've joined. I'm now a member of this group here on the bottom left. I'm now on the bottom right, sorry. I'm now a member of this group. I need to have the contribution rights. I need to be made a contributor. So for example, if you create a group and you populate the syllabus and you invite people to join, you don't necessarily want them to be sharing content to your group syllabus. So you have to then give them permission to save content to your group syllabus. And that is something that we will be doing, okay? So don't worry too much about that. We'll check regularly. Once you join the group, we will then, as group leaders, give you the appropriate permissions to share content with the group, okay? Anybody on the platform can create a group. And once you create a group, you can decide whether you make it public or private. Once everyone's joined our group, it'll be private. So this is our workspace, and this just lets you know it's a new platform. Don't worry about any bugs that you might see. You can click it off once you've, you've read it. The platform should be signed off around uh, mid to late December, okay? So we just close that off. This is equally a help page. Anytime you need help, just click on that, and it'll remind you and refresh you about what that area is. In this case, workspace is your private space on Notesmaster. Every page on Notesmaster has a help page. So if you're stuck and not quite sure what you can do here, just click on the little need help question mark. Okay. 
So this is our syllabus, food and nutrition. It's the units, the modules, and under each module you have the specific objective. And the specific objective is where we put our content. And importantly, that content can take on a few different forms, okay? We can create custom content through creating. We can link external web pages to our syllabus and we can create interactive quizzes. But for the purpose of this video, we're creating and linking. So let's, to create, put our title in. And food and nutrition, let's focus on hunger. Put in the title, click create. That gives us our editor, which is similar in layout to, to Microsoft Word. And it's a personal resource, okay? This is a personal content. Everything we do now is personal and stays in our workspace until we share it. So this is our white blank canvas, okay? This is our area to create. Let's go advanced. And then let's click on a template. We've created a set of templates. Heading template, which inserts a nice heading and frames the blank canvas. Note style one, which gives us a layout with a little icon, uh, a table with a, a video. Note style two, smaller, but again, table framed. And then we have style three and style four. So explore them to see which one best suits your, your note type, okay? Heading template is blank canvas and allows you to use some of the features we show in the videos posted in our group, okay? Inserting tables of your own. But let's, let's start with note style one. Click okay, and the template is inserted onto the page. So we have our title space here. Let's delete the title text and put in the title of our resource, Hunger. That's a different title to this title up here, which is for the system to recognize, okay? When you print the page, the hunger here is what gets printed. So it's important to put a title there to provide some balance and frame the resource, okay? Now, it's important as well for us to try and ensure our resource adheres to good instructional design principles, okay? So we have taken the time to lay out an introduction, as you might see, use of an icon to draw attention to focal points in the resource, and then perhaps some text bridges to s link the next parts of your note together so that it, it reads logically down the page, okay? Introduction type in your text and then delete the blah blah blahs. The blah blah blahs are just placeholders, so don't worry about them. They maintain a bit of page spatial balance, okay? So in this instance, we have an icon, and the icons can be found in the icon folder. It's a yellow folder, and there's a range of icons that you use to insert into your note, and that can be used to enliven your note, to, as I say, have a bit of a focal point, or note this, remember this, here's an idea if you need help, or here's a link. So it just makes it a little bit more interactive for the reader to engage with, okay? And then, of course, below that you can have bridging text and video, uh, video introductions, which we see here in a table, okay? Let's just take a quick look, though, of how to swap out our, our title, okay? And, our, sorry, our icon here. So click on the icon, that selects it, okay? And let's click on this yellow folder here, insert file, and that opens our file manager. Okay, and you'll know more about this in the video on file manager. We're looking for icons for notes. Click on that. And there's a range of icons here. Click on the one that you want, and it's going to be inserted into the page in a very big way. Okay, if I click on this one, oh, there it is. Okay, it's taken up all of our page now. So let's select it. Careful to select the icon by clicking on it. Make sure it's not the table. So click on the icon so it goes blue and then drag the corners down to simply shrink it. And as you see, you'll see the text numbers shrinking down and down and down as we reduce the size. You can click on the image green button and quickly edit the dimensions 80 by 80. And that'll automatically shrink it down quickly for you here. Okay. We're left with a large table. So we click the table, and again we can drag the corners at the top or at the bottom to shrink it down, okay? 
So tables expand or contract based on what we put in them and they are able to be resized by clicking and dragging as you see here, clicking and dragging down and crucially we begin to regain the size and format of our page, okay? Table is back to its normal size and we can click table properties to do some fine tuning. We can set the width to 915 is what we usually use and height to approximately 65 for, for these icon alerts. But you're free to do as you please in this regard. So here we have our table back to its normal sizing. To just show you that again, because I know it's perhaps a lot to grasp, click the icon, click on insert file, the file manager opens up, select the file or the icon, in it goes. If you don't like what you've done, you think you've made an error, click the undo arrow, okay? It just undoes the action that you've previously done and resets the template to its previous state. So like undo in Word or redo. And if you redo it, to just show you how you do that again, click on it and drag it down to size. There you go. So it's nice and small on our page. So then we have our text here, perhaps a little bridging, whatever you wish to put relevant to the, to the title. And then we want to perhaps um, try and link things together with a video so they can view something interesting, another way of conveying information about the particular, particular resource. So if you click on the video and then click on this red YouTube button. So in doing that, if you type in the title, just like you're doing a YouTube search. So this searches all of YouTube for videos. Type in the title, click search, and here we have a useful video. Click on it and then let it play so you can preview it, ensuring it's age appropriate and relevant, etc. And if you're happy with it, you can insert and close or use the width height buttons to adjust the height. Insert and it goes in its place right there and you save it. So here is your note. If I close it off for you to give it a bit of uh, perspective. It lives in your syllabus now with the name, your flag, the date updated, your school and the title. And it's a personal note. And here's my note, nicely laid out. I haven't had to worry about the format and the formatting elements of it. I have my text in place and of course I have my video and I'm able to make additions as and when I, I choose to this particular note. Now I can leave a comment at the bottom, public comments if I wanted to stimulate the community and ask a question. If I click edit, you can't leave a comment in the edit mode, okay? So if you wanted to leave a comment at the bottom of your note for students, uh, you would do so in the viewer mode, okay? So what about adding a link? Okay, some people like to link to external web pages. So if I did a search for hunger, hunger in the world, it comes up, obviously I use Google, you could use Yahoo or Bing, you get a range of websites. And this is a nice one, hunger statistics, and perhaps this would supplement my note. So I can copy the web address, right click, copy the web address. I'm going to highlight hunger, the text that I want to link, click on it, paste in right click and paste in the web address, select new window. Okay, so it opens in a new window and then I click OK. And you see it turns purple and is underlined. And I can break the link by clicking there. Okay, I save it in this instance now and I'm going to share it with our group. I now have permission to share this with the CXE content program. You can group share. So it's, I've got permission, my colleague has given me permission, I click here and I click save. So you're going to notice my note is no longer personal. You're going to see it saying shared, okay? This means this note was private in my syllabus, has now been shared with our group, okay? So if I click on the link, you see the link opens up on a separate tab, okay? And I can navigate back and forth quite easily to it. So that's a, an important way. If we go to our group and if we click on the group here, I'm a contributor as you see now as opposed to before where I was just a member. I now have contributor rights. In our group, it shows the number of resources we've shared here on the right hand side. I go to shared resources 
and I click food and nutrition, go into the syllabus and you'll find my note here. Here it is, hunger. Okay, I can click on it and it shows the author and here it is. The so students will come to the group and save this note. But for our program, I'm sharing it here for feedback. So other teachers will be able to look at it and say, yep, we like that. No, we don't like that. Check your spelling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Check your sentencing. So if we go back to Workspace, I'd just quickly like to highlight, suppose we wanted to link a full resource independently and not have a resource linked within a resource, so to speak. So i.e. highlight the text hunger and make it a link. Suppose I wanted to link this whole page to my syllabus so students read this independently or a range of things. So I would right click again, copy the web address. Okay, right click to copy. So I'm making here a linked resource. Okay, this material is copyrighted, so I can't copy it in the way that I could do a Word document, copy and paste. So in my workspace, in my syllabus, at the appropriate objective, I'm going to create a linked resource to complement my hunger resource. Click New, click Link. The title has linked there. So just type in my title. Linked indicates it's a linked resource. Right click now, paste in the web address and give a description. So the description will guide the student or the user what to do. If the the resource has a video, I could say read the text and make sure you watch the video or answer the question. So you're just guiding the student or teacher where to go. So you've put all those in, click create now. Now create, you see it's different at the top of the page, you have the web address and it says linked, which means this is a linked resource. Don't worry about this little image that you're going to see, because it's a it, it, it's uh, just telling the user this is a linked resource. So this is relevant in the editor. And there's our description that we can add. Enter a full stop to make sure it's nice and correct. Okay, we save it. Let's share it again. Click share. Click on the shared and click save. So that's how we share content with our CXE group. Close the editor. And you see I have two resources now, linked and hunger. So if I click on the hunger one, just to quickly refresh and show you, this is the resource we created. Video pays nicely and it looks good. Well laid out, easy to follow with a link to an external website. And then here's our linked resource. Click on it. It opens up and here it says the resource contains a link. Click on the link button at the top. Click on the view link button. So we click view link and it opens up in a separate window which respects the copyright of this web page. So this feature allows you to link a web page from anywhere on the internet directly to your syllabus. So it's a very powerful tool to bring really the content from the web into your syllabus very, very easily, okay? And as you say, all elements of copyright are respected because it opens in a separate window. And of course, you cannot copy and paste the stuff from this web page, but you can use it. Okay, so that's a little bit about our two resources in our syllabus area. So this is how we hope to get started with yourselves. They'll live privately in your syllabus. Share them when ready. And they are, of course, at the appropriate objective. So however many you're targeted, I believe it's 40 resources, you can then insert or create your resources and keep track of how many you have. Okay, back in our group now, you see that we have... Uh, obviously, to refresh, you have the members area here, which shows me that I've shared two resources. So I can see that Shabba is well underway, um, but Rosemary might have needed a little extra help. So food and nutrition, in terms of our syllabus, my resources are here to be accessed. Okay, so I can click on them. And if now in the feedback process, you leave your comment under educator comments, okay? That allows just teachers to see it under educator comments. So you leave a comment, Dean, the video is not good, the text isn't great, I can act on it. Public comments, everyone can see, okay? Educator comments for the purpose of this program in the feedback process, that's what we're using. Public comments, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, finally, is a good way of stimulating discussion though on your note. So if I've created this note, maybe I want to ask the student to perhaps, you know, what, what do you think about 
uh, the video and what it's saying about hunger. You know, leave a thought so we can stimulate a discussion at the bottom of our note uh, so everybody who reads it can have a part in a discussion. And every time someone leaves a comment, I'll be notified in my external email, okay? And of course, as the author of the note, you'll be able to delete any erroneous comments. And anyone who leaves a dodgy comment, you'll have their name and they'll be able to be quickly, quickly referenced. So this is a process. Hopefully this video wasn't too long, but it was designed just to show you how to get going. Remember, we have these help icons here. Uh, if you get stuck, just remind you what you can do on this particular page. And as I say, they're all over the site. So take some time. It's supposed to be a fun activity. This is supposed to be helpful to you in your class. So get going and feel free to connect with us via the WhatsApp group that'll be complementing this, this, this engagement. Okay, thanks for now.